Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. My name is Katherine. I am currently a first year PhD student at The Ohio State University. I study history, specifically modern Europe and France during World War I. It is officially the new year, though nothing has changed and it only seems to have gotten worse within the first week. I don't even know how that's possible, but it did. But today I'm gonna take a slight reprieve from being glued to the news to tell you guys all about my budget as a PhD student, what my stipend looks like, how we get a stipend, what it covers, and how I budget and spend that money every single month. I have got my trusty accountant right here next to me who's gonna help me go through all of my finances and you guys will get to see how I spend my money every single month. So as a grad student, there are many different ways that you can get a stipend or get money for being a grad student. For masters, it's gonna be a little different, so I'm gonna be focusing this video specifically on PhD students. So typically, PhD students are either given a fellowship, some sort of scholarship, or they work in exchange for money. Typically, that's on a graduate teaching associate sit associateship and assistantship, however you want to call it, a teaching, a TA, a teacher's assistant, however you want to call it, you work a little bit and then you get paid a monthly stipend. Now these monthly stipends vary dramatically, not only across state and by school, but also by type of degree that you are getting. In my experience, people in liberal arts and the humanities are given less stipends than people who are, say, doing physics or some sort of uh, science, math, or tech PhD. That's just kind of, unfortunately, the nature of it. So I'm going to be very open and honest about what I make, and I'll put up some graphics. All of the information about my fellowship is public. You can search it, Google it on the web and see the breakdown of people's stipends and fellowships. This year in my cohort, there are four of us and we all got a fellowship. I don't know exactly if we're all on specifically the same one. I think we are. So first I'll just talk a little bit about my fellowship. So this year I'm on a fellowship, which means I don't have to work. I just get go to school and get a monthly stipend. So my stipend is the Distinguished University Fellowship, which is $26,316. I have to look at my spreadsheet here per year. I get two years of this fellowship. So my first year and my dissertation year, I'll get that same annual stipend. And then it also covers all of your tuition, most school fees, not all, and then you get 85% of your healthcare coverage. This is pretty great considering I have been on and off health insurance since I graduated undergrad. I have not been on my parents' health insurance. So the only other time I've had health insurance in the last three years was one year when I was on my master at NYU thanks to student health insurance. But the other two years I have not had health insurance, which is not good. So I'm very thankful for that. But the fees that aren't covered and the other 15% of the healthcare that's not covered comes out of your paycheck. So monthly, we are supposed to be getting $2,193. None of my paychecks have been that high because they take out for the health insurance and the fees every month automatically. And then August and May are half payments or maybe it's like 75%. Not exactly sure what the breakdown is. No. So August and May, <laughs> this is so confusing even to me. The stipend is distributed across the nine months of the academic year with August being a half payment month and May being a half payment month. With the fee breakdown and removing the health insurance, my monthly checks have been $2,057. $2,057. And this is what I am living on. Now, like I said, this fellowship covers two years. So only my first year and my dissertation year. For all the other years, I will be on a GTA, a graduate teaching associateship, I think they call it. It might be assistantship. 
anyways. And I will be a T, essentially a TA for courses. I'll be working 20 hours a week and I will get paid less than on my fellowship. In the past, I believe it was somewhere around like $17,900. They just made changes to that. So I think it's gone up by one or $2,000 for next year, thanks to our student government, which was petitioning for that. However, it is still a pay decrease and I will be working next year. So it will be very interesting to see how I am able to budget next year. I imagine my budget and spending video will change very much over the next few years. So maybe I can do an update every time my budget is changing. Next, I'm gonna take you guys through how I spend my money, where it's going, how I use my stipend. So I'm gonna put a little graphic up here so you guys can see the breakdown of my $2,057 income, which is only for the school year. So I spend $500 on rent. I split my rent with my roommate. I live in a two bedroom townhouse, kind of close near campus. And we have laundry and free parking included, which is amazing. And then utilities, which I pay for the Wi-Fi, electricity, gas, water. The utilities vary a lot the gas and electricity bill have gone way up during the winter which is to be expected so that'll vary a little bit but my housing essentially comes to about six hundred dollars per month then i spend about two hundred dollars on groceries i typically shop every week spend somewhere between 40 to 60 dollars per week I will say this grocery budget is the biggest grocery budget I've ever had in my life, which is like kind of sad. I don't know. When I was an undergrad slash teaching in France slash living in New York, my grocery budget was horrendous. I probably spent like maybe $35 a week. I was eating a lot of pasta and a lot of pasta, pretty much it. But now I'm trying to eat a little bit more balanced meals, kind of try and like be an adult, whatever that means, and eat healthier. So my grocery budget is about $200. I have my subscriptions, which are $10. I pay for CBS All Access because essentially all my shows are in CBS. I watch, let's do a quick show recap. I watch Bull, NCIS, Survivor and the Amazing Race, and Blue Blood. So I have a CBS show for almost every day of the week. And then Patreon, so I'm subscribed to a Patreon of a podcast that I listen to called Rob Has a Podcast. I'm gonna assume that none of you guys know what that podcast is, though if you do, would love to chat with you guys about it. It is a podcast of a guy who competed on Survivor many years ago and he podcasts about Survivor, different reality shows, and I just love his content. So each of those is $5, comes out to $10 a month for subscriptions. The rest of my money right now is pretty much going towards my car. So I have on here car payment $363. I got a car loan with an extremely high interest rate. It's a little under 8%, which is pretty awful. It's not that I have bad credit, it's that I don't really have any credit. I have a credit card, but it's joint with my mom. And even though I pay it off on my own and she's just on there, I don't have any other of my own accounts. And given my transient life of the past four, four years, I haven't had any other chances to get credit. Credit is a mess. Maybe I should do another video on that. I don't understand the credit system. I don't like it. It's so difficult to com comprehend and it kind of screwed me over in my car payment, but there we go. That's what I pay per month. And then the last thing that the rest of the money essentially goes towards because I'm not really saving any money is going towards debt repayment. So I've kind of encapsulated debt repayment to include additional car payments and anything on my credit card bill. So that's going to be your extra expenses. You know, if I had to fly home, um, paying for things for my beautiful puppy who I have not lived with him for the like past six years but I still pay for him so that's not really debt repayment because I don't have any credit card debt but that's just things that accumulate and I have to pay every month and then my car 
additional payment. So I'm trying to pay off my car as soon as possible because debt is really, really scary to me and the interest rate is so high, it's just frustrating. So this first year of my PhD, while my fellowship is higher and I have a higher monthly income, I wanted to put as much money towards that as possible. So for the first four months of my PhD, I've put most of my extra money that's left over from the stipend towards paying off my car. Now, if you guys watched my New Year's planning video, you know that savings is a big part of that, and it definitely is. So I'm gonna be trying to restructure how I'm spending this money. Instead of paying additional money off of my car, I'm going to start putting that money towards a savings account, emergency fund, and then trying to obtain Ohio residency instead of you know, putting all this extra money towards the car. I got my car in July of last year and have now paid off 50% of my car, which is incredible. And I've done that largely by like not saving, which is also probably not great. You win some, you lose some, but this is how I spend my money every month. A few things to know about stipends is that it's not that much money. You know, it says $26,000. I don't see all of that money because I also pay towards school fees and health insurance, which is totally understandable, but it does mean that I don't see that amount of money every month. You don't get paid in the summer, which is extremely hard. And you hear of a lot of grad students doing other things in the summer you know, if they're not able to get grant money or even if they are able to get grant money, they might have to do some sort of side gig. And some people have stipends that are just unlivable. Like I said before, it depends what your degree is in, what school you go to, the stipends vary greatly. I've seen stipends as low as $15,000 and I've seen stipends as high as $35,000 depending on the school. So, you know, you can't just go in thinking you're gonna get X amount of money if you decide to get a PhD. Everything is totally dependent on what you wanna get your degree in. And that is it for my budget breakdown. This video was pretty much just that, but I hope it was interesting and informative. If you guys have any questions about other aspects of stipends, fellowships, anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment. Also, I haven't mentioned this in any of my previous videos, but while I was a master's student at New York University, I also worked as a graduate admissions assistant, which means essentially I just helped out in the graduate admissions office, which was not the actual admissions, but really just people calling in to ask different questions about the process, about different programs. And so I learned a lot about applying to programs and what programs cost, scholarships, etc. So I wanna do another video very soon about how to apply for programs, but if you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in my comments. I know some of you guys have been doing that, which is awesome, and I will get to those videos. I just wanna give a big thank you to all my subscribers. We surpassed 400 just before the new year, which is so incredible in such a short amount of time since I've revamped my videos which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for your support. Let's see if we can get to 500. Make sure you guys like this video, comment, and then subscribe to keep seeing all of my content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.